Okay, recording in progress. Welcome to Instagram Marketing. Um, we have Miss Jessica Desfosses of Idaho Real Estate. Her and her husband, Brandon, are, if you don't know, the top producers um, in the Pocatello area for our brokerage and at least number one or number two sometimes, depending on Joe and Jade as well, um, in our brokerage. So top producers, they're awesome. They've been with us for a couple of years now, so we appreciate them at HomeSmart. And they've They've always just been so good at sharing what they know. By they, I mean Jessica. Jessica's just great at pouring out knowledge of marketing and social media um, and all of that. So we appreciate them having knowledge on us and just sharing what they've learned. They do have 7,000 followers on their Instagram, so they really know what they're doing. And um, yeah, I just want to say that I appreciate their authenticity when it comes to social media. Jessica, how many... Um, leads or buyers and sellers do you think you get from Instagram? Um, first of all, thank you for that intro. That was really nice of you. Um, I would say 80% of our business is from Instagram. So a huge, like, I mean, Instagram is, it's almost kind of scary how much we get from it because two days ago, my personal Instagram got hacked. And it made me realize, oh crap, if our business Instagram got hacked, like we are kind of in trouble. So, um, and I guess it's a good thing and a bad thing because we kind of have it dialed in on how to get clients from it. And um, it's been a complete life changer since we started marketing ourselves, ourselves on Instagram. Um, but our eggs may be in one basket. So we, it, it does, we do have clients from other places, but we don't ever buy leads. Um, we are in the point in our business where we're getting repeat customers and referrals. And of course, like friends and family, right? Um, I would like to add that I am not a master Instagrammer. I don't have the code to go viral. I'm not Instagram famous. Like we are very... Um, like I don't spend money on Instagram. I don't spend money on content other than we just did some videos with, with a guy that we will be posting here soon. But um, all that to say, like, you don't need to have this like massive following to be able to make money from getting Instagram clients or clients from Instagram. Um, did I answer your question? <laughs> I think I did. I want to tell you guys about this video I just saw last night, actually, that I thought was so cool and um, kind of tags along to the point I just said. So this guy was talking about how um, there was this like experiment done where these people picked just a random neighborhood in a random city and they went and knocked on their doors and said, who is the best real estate agent in this area? And everybody gave different names. There wasn't one that like stood out above the others. And then um, the next part of their experiment was they mailed postcards, one postcard every week for eight weeks to the same people that they just went and knocked on their doors. And they made up a fake realtor. There's a fake realtor, a fake brokerage, fake number, fake website, all that. And just for eight weeks, sent one postcard with all this fake information on it. They went back to that neighborhood eight weeks later and asked them the same question. And the majority of the neighborhood said this fake realtor that they've never talked to. They've never, it's not even a real person. So to me, that just goes to show people are going to go with who they know and not like they, the way they worded it was who's the best realtor. And so they just went with who they knew, not who they knew was the best realtor. So to me, that tells me top of mind awareness is hundred percent going to win you clients and my clients, my target audience, they're on social media. So that's why I feel like it's important for us to stay on Instagram so much so that we can continue with that top of mind awareness. So I thought that was kind of a cool, a cool uh, experiment they did. Super interesting. Jessica, are you suggesting that I should maybe recruit fake agents? Yeah. Um, fake agents. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I guess it's not that hard to be the best realtor in people's minds. That's all it takes. Pretty crazy. 
Um, so this is kind of like more open ended. I, I, I'm sure everyone is kind of in different spots and they're like social media journey. So I, I would kind of like, if you guys would just like ask me questions so that I know what I'm telling you is going to be relevant to you. Cause there's just so much that we could go into. So if you just want to turn on your mic and your camera or put it in the chat. Jessica, I, I have one. Um, okay, let's hear it. I'll break the ice here. So you mentioned about 80% of your business comes from Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, you uh you had over 25 million in, in volume last year that's a lot of business off of instagram um how do you convert someone from a follower and a message to a physical appointment and contract what's your process there so um the home buying process it's a whole journey as we all know right the odds that you are going to find somebody and they're going to find you at the perfect opportunity when they don't have a realtor, but they're looking to buy, it's very slim. So my philosophy is you need to appeal to your target audience in other ways, not just when they are looking to buy or sell a home. You need to have that relationship set prior. So on our Instagram, I will share very personal things. Like our, our posts that always do the best are with our family. Like people feel like emotionally attached to our family. And I think that's why they feel like they can trust us. Um, and I do mix in like, it's not obviously all family, like I'll mix in family with something entertaining with something of value. And I feel like once you have them, once you have them on your page looking and they're seeing this big mix of things, that's when it sticks in their mind. And so, um, like, for example, I just, I just redid all of our buyer and seller guides. So I found this, this software, which actually isn't working now because I got hacked. So I got to redo it. I'm so mad about it, but it's the coolest thing ever. It's, um, and if you got, if some of you guys follow us, you've probably seen me post a few things about it. Uh, I'll say comment on this post or reply to our messages with the word buyer and it's going to automatically send my buying guide to them. Um, and what's amazing to me about that is it's automatic. It's not taking any time out of my day. I already did all this work to set it up and it's bringing value and benefiting people and things like that stick in their mind so that when they are ready to buy or sell, then they do reach out. So that's Super helpful. Thank you. Uh, Joe asks, what is the best, or I'm sorry, what is the first step of starting a following on Instagram? Oh, I love this question. And Kelly probably already talked about it too in her branding class. The first step of starting a following on Instagram is deciding who your target audience is. And that's a whole can of worms. But basically, and Joe has had tons of clients. Joe, think about who is your most favorite client you've ever had and copy and paste that person into a persona and then make a target audience around that. So is it male or female? Um, what age group? What's their hobbies? What do they like to do around town? What are their pain points? What is their price range? All sorts of things like that um, to, to narrow it down. And it, it does feel scary to people to narrow it down like that because you feel like, oh, I'm only going to target this one person. Well, you're marketing for that one person, but your reach, it's going to go beyond that. People that you think don't necessarily fit into your target audience are still going to be attracted to that. So that's always the number one thing I tell people is decide who you're talking to, because then you know what to talk about. Awesome. Here's another question for you, Jessica. This is from Jennifer Fredrickson. How do you establish your credibility when you may not be an expert? I love that question because I suffer from imposter syndrome big time, such as right now. At the beginning, I said, I am not a marketing Instagram expert, but here I am talking to you guys about it. Like imposter syndrome is like such a big thing. Sometimes you just have to fake it till you make it honestly. And if you are providing value and content for your target audience, um, it's just, you're, you're automatically going to be an expert or credible in their minds because you're bringing them value and information that they need. 
So I think Jennifer, weren't we talking before about how you were going to be the like new build agent or something like that? Am I remembering right? Yeah. How is that and going? I have way too much imposter syndrome, so I don't know how to start that. Same. So um, maybe what you should do is just sit and write down like all of your list of like questions that you need to feel comfortable answering for other people and like answer them on paper. And then that right there, your whole sheet that you just made, it's so much content that you can just turn into posts or guides. So I think it starts with you digging into more knowledge for yourself first and feeling more comfortable. I also feel like this because people see my house. I even got, I got a message this morning because I posted that my electrician just, just put our light outside. And this guy was like, when I build a house, I want you to design it. And immediately I'm like, I can't design a house. What? <laughs> but I literally did it. <laughs> so I'm with you on that for sure. Can I just say that both of you are two of the most impressive professionals like i mean you know having jennifer ask you know how do you establish your credibility jennifer what you did your first year in real estate was absolutely astonishing i had a front row seat to that so you are you are an expert you're um, already doing it and, and jess i mean you're there's a reason you are what you are today and it's because of what you guys are doing so it's you know Thanks. have that confidence because thank you I have a front row seat to your guys' amazingness and I can I can see it. So I would also like to add, I feel like having other people praise you and establish your credibility for you is helpful too. So don't forget to ask for reviews from people because I know that people think you're a great agent and helpful, Jennifer. And so I think maybe just proving it by asking people, hey, can you write up a review and then post it? Um, you know, say not my words, but these people's words, you know, and, you know, obviously you want to give credit to them too and say, look how good or look how awesome my clients are. And here's what they had to say. I totally agree with that. And to add to that, I think we all should be following each other closely on social media and posting comments, like basically our mini review to support each other too. Because if somebody thinks I'm an expert and I'm giving props to Jennifer, then they're gonna be like, oh, well, she's probably really great too. Well, and like yesterday I posted about a closing that I had and I had some, I, I had thanked the title company and the lender and one of our agents who helped me out as well. And then of course they're like, oh my gosh, no, thank you. You're awesome. Like what a great transaction. And so it kind of just like builds on each other. Mm -hmm. It's not me, but you know, yeah. Okay, but I also think if you just drop the fact that you graduated from Snake River High School in 2004, that alone is going to set you apart from everything. So that's all you need, huh? Okay, Kelly, I see your question. What is the best way to market a listing on Instagram, just to post a real ad story, etc.? Um, I feel like this one is just ever changing and also depends on your target audience. Like I kind of know that like my target audience doesn't really want to see like a carousel of still pictures of a listing I have. I don't ever post like just like still photos of just listed, just sold, pending, never. If I'm, if I'm posting pictures of a listing, it's going to be in my stories. Or if it's like a super fantastic, amazing listing, I will do a reel of it but like very quick, like keep your attention, get it going, get the basics. And then a call to action of, if you want more info, go here or comment this or whatever. Um, so I don't know, does that help? That's like a non-answer, I guess, but it just, I, like that. I, I think that's good because I, I do see a lot of realtors that just post, just sold, just listed pending and you know, unless you're actually looking for a house at that time, or you're looking for a realtor at that time, I don't think it appeals. It's just exactly. It's like, you kind of have to think like, is my target audience going to give a crap about this? Or are they going to see this and be like, who cares? Right. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. Put your questions in the, um, into the chat, please, or unmute your, yourself. But Jessica, like if you were going to give Instagram 101 to, realtors, what are the top 
five best things that people can do either on their profile or post ideas or branding ideas? Um, number one, show your face, at least let people hear your voice every single day on stories. Stories, like I feel like your posts are gonna be targeted and curated, however, whatever that means to you. That should, whatever you're posting should fit in with your target audience. Your stories are like whatever you wanna do. Like it's a free for all in the stories. And so I think you need to at least let people hear your voice or sh even better show your face every single day on stories. That's number one. Um, number two, I would say follow five accounts that you are like inspired by or want to be like, and just turn on their notifications and follow what they're doing and see how you can implement it for yourself. That's how I found out about the, the Instagram robot that can automatically send my buyer guides out because I followed a, this guy is like, it's his job to just help people on Instagram. And I saw that's what he does. And then I found out that's what he used. So that's how I found that. So um, I think, I think shoot big, like I want to be like this person on Instagram and take what inspires you from them and, and make it work for yourself. Next in yes. your bios, you guys need to put your service area. Nothing drives me more crazy than a realtor follows me on Instagram and I go, look, do you have it on there? You better Chubbuck, Idaho, right there. When a realtor follows me on Instagram and I want, if it's like someone local, I for sure want to follow them back. But if you don't say Southeast Idaho or Chubbuck, Idaho Falls, whatever, I'm not doing it. Cause I have no idea where you are. And that means your potential clients have no idea where you are. So like your bio, Kelly, read your bio to us. Do I have to? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> so it says Kelly Kamek dash Idaho realtor. And that's in my actual name because when people search for an Idaho realtor, I'm going to pop up hopefully, I don't know. And then real estate agent under that. And then it says realtor living in Chubbuck, Idaho. So I narrowed it down. I'm a wife and mama and homemaker. And then I said brokered by HomeSmart Premier Realty. So I've Love kind it. of covered all my bases of who I am, what I like to do, which is like make homes happy, whether it's buying a house or decorations, or I post recipes sometimes. And then I always put home smart premier realty because I'm scared to get, I'll get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I love it because you said what you do, where you are, and you said a little bit about who you are too. And that's just in the first two seconds when someone, when someone comes to your page, I love it. So everybody here, if your bio is not specific like that that's the I want you to go do that right now while we're talking do it so right now Jennifer asks how many accounts do you have how often do you cross link business and personal so I'm assuming that means like how many Instagram accounts do you have for yourself and okay. your business and then so, do you post on I'm assuming she means do you yeah do you post both pictures or both things on both accounts or I don't know um, so I have our business Instagram and I have my personal Instagram and Brandon has his personal Instagram too. So we have our own and then we have ours together. I listened to this podcast about these people debating whether like a, like a loan realtor should just like use their personal account or should they get a new one? I think if I did this by myself and not with Brandon, I probably would have just kept it all on my personal because like we were talking about before, this is like a journey and it's an emotional journey for people. And you want them to know more about you than just you're a realtor who knows what they're doing. You, you want them to know you're a realtor who knows what, them, what they're doing. And also they're such a fun mom and they shared this and I want to do that because I saw that on their page and I love her house and she got this decor here. So um, I, th I think that one's a little bit like more what you're comfortable with sharing at this point, I do like having separate because I like posting my kids and working out on my personal um, and obviously everything else over on the business. And I will just like, like, I don't really ever post just my kids on our business page. I hope that's helpful to you. 
I think it, I think it depends on how comfortable you are also. Like, I'm just not super comfortable posting just my kids on my business page because I don't know everybody who follows us on there. So how often should we post on Instagram in order to get more followers? The algorithm is always changing. And now with reels becoming so big on Instagram, um, I think it's just always changing. I think what's more important than like putting a number on it, like two reels a day, one reel a day, whatever. I think what's more important is that you're consistent to whatever is manageable for you. So like for me, it's very manageable to do stories every single day. It's becoming a little bit unmanageable for me to post every single day. And so my consistent, it's every other day. It's, if it's not every day, it's every other day. I'm not, I'm, tr I'm trying really hard not to fall off for a week at a time. Sometimes mom life, crazy life, sometimes that happens, but I think it's more important to just decide what, what can you handle being consistent with and going with that and planning accordingly to that. Super. Yes. Oh, go ahead, Elise. Um, I've heard you talk about a content calendar before. Yeah. Is that a, um, do you still use content calendar? And is that more for posts and not stories? Or how do you balance the two? Yeah, I would say a content calendar is more for posts because um, for me, stories are like, oh, I'm already doing, like I'm already watching my electrician do my light. I'm just going to take some videos and pictures of that. And that's in real time. Um, calendars, I... I'm not going to lie. Mom life hits you hard and you, it's so hard to stay organized. I used to be so into the content calendar and getting it done by myself. Um, once I had kids, it was not feasible anymore. And I'm sure a lot of people here also have kids and can relate to that. And so I signed up for, I think Kelly, you use it too, coffee and contracts, which I do not follow cut and dry. I use that when I don't know like when I don't already have an idea of what I'm going to post that day, then I'll go in there and see, oh, what do I like in here? Some people use that website for like, that's all their marketing. I don't do that. I use it as like a supplement. Does he, do you guys know what that is? Coffee and contracts? Has everyone heard of that? Why don't you just give them a refresher if they don't know? Yeah, good idea. Thank you. Appreciate you. I didn't see it turn on. Oh, okay, cool. It looks great. Thank you. See you. Coffee and Contracts is a subscription website. Um, I think the people who run it are realtors, right? Um, basically it's like you pay, I think 30 bucks a month and they have a content calendar already planned for, you know, here's a, here's a topic and here are photo ideas and there's a caption already written out that you can literally just copy and paste, put your own stuff in there, copy and paste. And they also just started doing a um, content vault where they have just a bunch of cool content um, that could be valuable, guides, flyers, posters, all sorts of things. So I feel like it's well worth the money because it makes my life easier. On that note, I also started paying for the um, pro version of Canva. I fought it for a really long time because I'm pretty savvy in like Photoshop and Illustrator. And so I thought, oh, I don't need to pay for another thing. It is, it's made my life so much easier because it's so convenient. So if you guys are spending a lot of time like making graphics and adding words and you want it to all look cohesive and have the same colors, buy the pro version of Canva. It is so worth it. It will make your life so much easier. I posted the link to coffee contracts and I'll get the Canva link um, on there as well. Do you, do you have a Canva link? Are you like an affiliate with Canva? Oh, I don't know. Maybe I should look. I have no idea, to be honest. Probably not if I don't know about it, right? Does anybody else have any uh, any questions for Jessica? I got like a thousand of them, but I'm, I'm happy to have someone else ask questions. What would you do different if you started over, Jessica? Oh, good question, Joe. What would I do different if I started? I probably came from Jade because it was really good. 
Thank you, Jade. That was such a good question. <laughs> I like this question because I thought for a second I was going to have to start over because I got hacked. So um, what would I do different if I start over? I kind of just recently decided on like, these are our set colors for our branding. And I know Kelly probably talked about this in her branding class because she's really good about this. Um, I, I just barely like in the last two months decided these are our fonts we use and these are the colors we use. And if I started over, I would just like hit the ground running with that. I think would just make it more cohesive from the very beginning. I think is what I do, but no regrets so far, honestly. I'm pretty, um, I feel very like lucky, like how successful we have been with Instagram. Like it's literally changed our whole life. And it even got us noticed by a production company that makes TV shows for HGTV. So like, even though we're not like, we are not famous on Instagram, we don't have a ton of followers. It's it, you don't have to, to be able to like have all these cool opportunities. Um, can you share some of the accounts that inspire you? Yes, you guys, let me pull them up. So I know I'm telling you right. <clears throat> right now I'm really loving creators that share like, um, like basically how to Instagram. So one that I really love is Brock. Let me find it. Brock 11 Johnson. He's like, his bio says Instagram growth coach. He always has amazing tips. And I feel like I always get good ideas from him. He also has a lot of reels that, um, I feel like when I watch them, I'm like, oh, this would be a good idea to do, like use this audio, but do my own thing with it. So I feel like that's a really, that's probably my number one that I like to check. Brock 11 Johnson. Here, why don't I top it, type it in here? Brock 11 Johnson. Okay. So that one, that guy is a Instagram coach. I'm also loving um, a lot of like home accounts right now. So, I mean, obviously there's Chris loves Julia, which is like, if you are on, if you're on Instagram, looking at home stuff, of course, you know, Chris loves Julia. I'll type that in there just in case. And then another home account I'm loving that is super inspiring me. She's been sharing like Amazon finds. Um, shoot, what's her name? Hang on, I'm having a mom, I'm having a mom brain moment. I'll find it and write it in there, but yeah, Ben Ramirez at Ben Ramirez is my inspiration. <laughs> um, while we're talking about other people's accounts, uh, a good way to grow your following organically is um, pick five to 10 accounts that you are inspired by and you think that their followers would like what you're sharing too. Go obviously follow those accounts that inspire you, turn on the notifications. And every time they post, you'll get a notification, go right to it and be an early commenter on it and say something like of value. For example, Chris Loves Julia posted, they just did something very similar to our patio, but on like a really big scale. So they did cement pavers with the grass in between. And we just installed a smaller version of that with pavers and turf. So when she posted that, I posted, this is so beautiful. If anybody wants to, wants to do something like this, but on a smaller scale, I just posted what we did in our backyard. And I swear right after I posted that, I got like 10 new followers from that. So I think that's a good way to uh, organically grow your following. And uh, I mean, it's social media, so you have to be social. So what are some ideas for new agents who don't have any buyers or sellers yet? So when you are brand new, you kind of have to just like scream it to the world and everybody you've ever known that you are a realtor. On top of that, you kind of have to prove yourself that you know what you're doing and that you can be trusted. Because I mean, imagine if like put yourself in somebody else's shoes, like some, a friend that you knew in high school, now they're on Facebook all of a sudden saying, I just got my license. That doesn't mean just because you've known them for a long time, doesn't mean that they are going to automatically trust you 
to, to deal with a transaction like that. So early on, you want to kind of set some credibility up for yourself. So one thing that we did, um, so Brandon started real estate first. I joined him about six months later. And the first thing we did when I got my license was we hosted a first time home buying class. And we had, it was at Wanderlust. We, we had let people buy drinks. We catered tacos. We teamed up with a lender and we just very briefly went over the home buying process. And I honestly feel like that totally skyrocketed us because yes, we were new and young, but we also were providing value and showing people we know what we talk about. And people that showed up bought houses with us, but not only that, people who saw the Facebook event reached out later on when they were ready. Like, hey, I saw that you hosted this. Can I get that material? We're starting to look at buying a house. So I feel like it's super important very early on, tell everybody you know, and in whatever way that you can think of, start setting up some sort of credibility for yourself whether it be um, an ad on Facebook with you made a home buying guide or a first time home buyer class, something that's, that shows, I know what I'm talking about and I'm going to teach you about it. What are the biggest mistakes you see agents make like on Instagram, on Instagram? Um, posting only just listed, just solds, pending, posting just about houses. People have Zillow, people have Realtor. They can go look at houses if they want to look at houses. Um, I don't think like people aren't really like entertained by that and they don't, it doesn't make them relate to you. So I guess just not not showing themselves on Instagram, hiding behind like just listed posts, I think would be the biggest mistake. I see people make the second mistake I see people make, um, and it's, it's a turnoff to me. So I know it's a turnoff to potential clients is, I think there's a difference between like showing you are a professional and an expert and bragging, for example, there's a big difference between I sold 3 million this month. Take that versus I helped six families get into their homes this month. In my opinion, there's a big, big difference there. One, the first one, you're showing that you care about the money and you care about numbers first and foremost. The second one, you're showing you care about people, you care about helping. And I think you're saying the same thing, but it comes off two very different ways. That's a good question, Jennifer. Is it more important to entertain or educate? I think both are equally important because both have a time and place in your social media. If you're solely entertaining, I don't think you're hitting the mark. If you're solely Educating, I don't think you're hitting the mark. I think you need to mix it up. Any, t any tips for people who are camera shy, who want to get on stories more? Yeah, everyone turn on your cameras right now. Get used to it. Oh, that's a cute baby. If you are camera shy, turn on your camera. And if your camera's not on, then you are probably camera shy. <laughs> You know what I think is a good tip for people who just like, you know, you're like, got yourself pumped up, you're ready to go, you push the button and then you're like, blah. I think you can just set your phone up, pointing at you, set it to video and just start talking. Like just in your camera app, like it's not going anywhere. You're not gonna post anything, just start talking. And then watch it over if you want to, delete it if you want to, just start like narrating what you're doing just to kind of like make your brain feel more comfortable just talking and seeing yourself talk. <laughs> ben, come on. You know who's not camera shy is Elias in his Facebook videos, his Facebook lives. That is one thing I, I have always been scared to do is Facebook lives. 
I've never done a Facebook Live and I don't know if I ever will. I think it's a great way to just connect. Like people get to see the actual you, I guess. Yeah, but that's very true. That is true. Maybe I'll try it someday before I die. Nobody wants to hear what I'm saying, so that's okay. I'll try it on my deathbed in honor of you. <laughs> Don't cry. Cool. I'm sure Instagram Live will be a thing or Facebook Live will be a thing when that happens. <laughs> It'll just go straight to our brains. Yeah, exactly. Does hey, anyone Jeff. have any other questions? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Nope, you're okay. I did want to ask you because I missed the beginning of it and sorry about that. But when you first started, did you find a mentor or did you start off on your own? So I started off on my own. My degree is in marketing and I had a bunch of like prior like marketing internships and marketing jobs, which I feel like definitely helped prepare me for a lot. I mean, there's nothing like just learning as you go. Um, but yeah, I did not have a mentor. I did try to like find other husband and wife real estate teams to kind of see how they marketed themselves. And I was just trying to decide like which way to go about it. But honestly, it's just been a lot of like, you know, take my past experiences and just kind of learn as I go. Like it's, it's, I think people a lot of times get like analysis paralysis and like are scared to post things. But honestly, the most, one of the most powerful tools on Instagram is like, you're able to go look at your analytics and see which posts have got the most engagement or done the most well or, or reached the, the most people. Um, and so I think honestly, just starting out and just posting things that you think would be good to post and just see how it does. Like, you know, not every single post is going to be perfect. Right. Okay. Well, thank you. So yeah. my, my biggest thing is going into this. Um, I do work for like home builders. So when it comes to that, I want to be able to like, um, what's the word, come to them and ask for them if they would let me be their realtor at one point. I just don't know how to approach it. One, because I am fairly new. Um, they do have experienced realtors they already work with. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to like filling out the paperwork and feeling confident and making sure they're getting the like right deal, I sometimes wonder if a mentor is a better situation for me or if I do just learn as I go as to where, I don't know, it's like a, a little bit of a different position that I'm not sure how to approach. Yeah, I, I definitely don't think it, like it wouldn't hurt having a mentor, you know, right. you probably could only benefit from that. Right. Okay, where cool. You feel like, you know, you're newer and not super sure of things. I think you totally could. Also, I just realized Brandon was like my mentor too. Cause he started real estate before me. So yeah, I, I just had a built-in mentor is what it was. <laughs> so, yeah, totally. And Elias and Kelly, of course, have always been so helpful along the way too. O'Shea, I would really recommend, um, <clears throat> like just asking an agent, which I can't remember which branch location you're closest to, if it's Boise or Idaho Falls. I'm actually in Twin Falls. Yep, okay. Twin Falls. Sorry, I would just follow, not follow them around like to be creepy, but you know, here, <laughs> ask Ben That's or Alexis um, if you could like shadow them for a day or just have like a weekly meeting with you know, some of the agents in that location where you can come and ask your questions and <clears throat> whether it's how do I word this or how do I fill out this contract or, you know, marketing, how do I get some new clients, ask for ideas. I think it's always like that's part of HomeSmart's um, mission is to make sure that you, that new agents feel supported and can ask dumb questions that aren't dumb, but, you know, we all have them as new agents. And so, I would really recommend reach out to Ben. If you don't have her number yet, Alexis Aldrich is awesome as well and could totally help mentor you, but never be afraid to ask for help or, um, you know, I, I shadowed somebody. I was like, can I just see if this is even a career that I want? Um, and I shadowed an agent for a few days and as stressful as her life was, I still got into it. I don't know why, but um, <laughs> anyway, yeah, just, just ask an agent that you think might be able to help you okay perfect thank you and I admire that you guys are moms like the baby in your lap amazing yes. also I did for this. <laughs> Jessica when you post are you worried about 
you know, if some people might not like your post or are you so committed to your audience that you don't really care what anybody outside of your audience thinks? Um, I'm highly sensitive. I cry very easily. So yeah, I'm always worried. No, I'm just, I'm slightly kidding about that. Um, I feel like I'm very careful not to post too many things that are controversial. Like I'm never going to be talking about politics or like controversial issues going on in the real world because I do not want, I know that there's going to be situations like that. And I know that I don't want that invited into my social media. So I just stay away from that entirely. As far as like, if I post like a DIY and someone hates it, I'm kind of like, well, sweet, you commented and that helps my engagement. So thanks. <laughs> So Ben says, um, I just did a story on my Insta. Give me some feedback, good or bad. <laughs> ben, you're funny. Okay, so here's Ben's. He's doing a, a walkthrough of like a new build, right? I love these shots you did. It says, checking out the progress. Are you looking to buy, build, sell, or invest? I honestly think people love new construction videos so much because it's like the process. They love seeing the process of it. I almost think you could even do those videos as a reel and talk about like what, like whose house is this? Is this a client? Is it your house? Um, and then like relate it back to you. Like this is my client's house. Is it your client's house? Um, and I'm, I am going along the journey with them building it and I'm just going to go check on it with them. So I think just do a little bit informa information. Okay. Yes. A client. Yeah. See, that's amazing. And I think that's so cool that you're going to check on it for them so I think you can totally like give yourself a pat on the back with that. That's awesome. Good job. Dang, he has four new construction going. That is so cool. See that right there is like so much content. You know what I do with my flips that people like is we give them like a name. So like our, one of our flips was named Fester. So I'd be like, I'm going to go check on Fester today. And people liked like knowing, cause we had a lot going on kind of like you so like give them names and be like, we're checking on Olivia today or whatever it is. I think that's cool. Good job. So I've got one question for some people that might be watching the recording later, but I know a lot of times I get agents saying that they are too old. They don't understand technology. They're just intimidated by it. Older people being on Instagram, you know, let's say just anybody older than not a millennial. Mm -hmm. Is it good for them to be on Instagram? Should they even bother? Do you think their target clients are watching um, or that it's okay for them to appeal to millennials? How do, how do you feel about Instagram and people who are old? <laughs> That's a great question. I do feel like it's okay for people to um, like try to relate to the younger. Crowd. I just followed this guy on Instagram the other day that is like a, he's like a gray haired grandpa that like does a bunch of reels and I just thought his like I, I actually thought it was cool that he was like an old guy doing it so I followed him because it that actually was like super inspiring to me because I'm like oh look at this guy that it's like it's different it breaks it up it's not just like the blondies with their pretty house doing it so I think it is a cool little area they could be in if they choose that they can do that and be consistent with it that's how I feel too I feel like it's refreshing to see older people or like a motherly figure or yeah, funny dads, like just trying to be on Instagram. And it's not, it's just, I don't know. Like I would want to work with somebody like that if they were willing to put themselves out there and or try to learn something new like Instagram. It shows that you're able to adapt. Oh, my child just pooped her pants. Um, <clears throat> but I, yeah, I just, I wanted you to tell people like, it's okay to, to, try it and, you know, put yourself out there, show your face, show it does not have to be perfect. No, that's the best part is I actually do love that about, about how like reels are getting pushed more. Like it's kind of becoming more like TikTok in a lot of ways. And TikTok, TikTok is like, so like raw and real, like people roll out of bed and just start TikTok in themselves and people like eat it up and love it. And I love that it's kind of bringing that authenticity over to Instagram more. Everything is not so like picture perfect. And I love that because it doesn't, there, there's not so much pressure anymore to like make everything look completely perfect and say the completely perfect things. 
Super. Okay. And please, if you guys have any other questions, type them in, type in your last minute questions about Instagram, please, while you have Miss Jessica on. Um, but I have kind of more of a practical question for people when they're creating their Instagrams or if they have one and they are ready to like rejuvenate it and start marketing more on there. Do you recommend, what do you recommend for a profile picture, your family, a house, a logo? What do you think? Um, the profile picture on Instagram is so small. I think it needs to be an up close headshot of you. And you know what I'm loving right now is the up close headshot with the background remove and like a neon background, like a, like a solid block color, which you can do very easily on Canva pro super easy. So close up headshot either like, and just like a not busy background. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to take out the, the background and do a color if you don't want to just a not super busy background. The focus is your face because it's so small. Super. And then one more question. I don't know if anybody else has more, but how often do you use Canva for your Instagram posts? I actually don't really use Canva for my Instagram posts. I use it more so for propaganda, <laughs> my guides, um, email templates, what else? I do like to do, like, if I'm going to do like some still photos, I do like to jump on Canva and do like, uh, like a solid background and then like a phone, like an iPhone with our picture in it. And then like, did you like this post? Save, comment, like, contact us. I do like to have that sometimes at the end of our, if I'm posting something, that's what I do. Coffee and contracts, I think is really great for, um, like, caption ideas and photo ideas, but I don't like photo ideas of yourself, but I personally am not into like the stock photos. And to me, when you add a bunch of like graphics and, uh, words to like that front picture, it becomes a little bit too stocky for me. Yeah, totally agree. We do need to do an Instagram or a Canva training at some point because that is just like its whole own training. So we yeah. definitely should Ivory's for sure. Um, and I just want to say before we wrap it up, also keep putting out questions if anybody has any more, but um, I heard somebody say once that Instagram is like your, your feed or like the grid where your, your posts go, that's like your storefront. Um, and it's kind of inviting people to come inside. And then your stories is like how you act with them inside the store and how your customer service is and like your face-to-face -face interactions and how you're going to treat your clients. So that's kind of why it's important, I think. And the, why Jessica does so well is because she does both posts and stories. So don't just post because you're going to, people keep walking by your store. It's pretty, but they don't really know you, right? Yes. I love that. What a good analogy. And yeah, honestly, if you take away one thing here today, one thing you can implement right now today, it's show up on your stories every single day, every single day. If you, if you want to commit to getting clients from Instagram, show up on your stories every single day, for sure. Yes, definitely good advice. And I just have to say, like, I love watching, I love watching Idaho stories. Every time I see their circle, I'm like, oh yeah, what's she going to post today? Yes. I love that you post about, um, like your garden and your kids and you're doing real estate stuff, but it really is just your real life. Right. And it's, right. um, what you and Brandon are doing today. And you do a lot of business. And so a lot of it is real estate related, but it doesn't just have to be. And so right. that's why I appreciate about you guys. One thing too, is if you're brand new and you don't have any clients yet, you can still go and tour vacant houses and take Instagram stories of some of the listings, you know, that are available. And you can say, Hey, this one's listed by so-and-so let me know if you want an in-person tour, but it kind of just shows people that you're busy. So don't yeah. let so me walk in the walk and talk in the talk. Yeah. Yeah. And especially, I know there's so many trainings and like classes that you have to take CE classes when you're new. And so maybe like, Hey, I'm going in to get my, um, post licensing fundamentals done today or, you know, whatever. I just don't want people to be scared just because they're new. Yeah, totally. Do and another, another thing about Instagram too, at least for me is like, I'm feeling this like shift in my content creation where I am kind of needing more help. So I feel like I'm needing more help. So I hired a guy to come do videos for us. So just know that like, there's always resource, there's tons of resources. There's tons of people that can help you with this kind of stuff. Don't let it like burden you so much that it's not fun anymore because that's not sustainable for you or your business. 
I love that. Okay, do we have any last minute questions? Did you guys all learn something? Maybe type it in if you learned something and like or appreciated Jessica's trainings. And again, if you haven't yet, put your Instagram name in the chat and we'll all go follow each other. We can get new followers that way and cheer each other on. And I expect to see you guys on your stories too. I'm gonna watch today. I'm gonna follow every single person and come watch your stories today. Thank you guys. That yeah, was super thank fun. you. You haven't done a training. That's good. I thought you didn't like me anymore. Oh, well, I mean, this doesn't mean we like you. We just <laughs> don't, don't, don't get confused. I'm not trying to. No, seriously, though, you're you're awesome. Thank you so thank much. You. I hope I hope at least some of it was helpful. Yeah, like I feel like I've had a front row seat to your guys's journey, uh, and really it's just so inspirational to just kind of see all the amazing things. I, I, every time I talk to Brandon, there's like a new business or there's a new house, you know, and it's the coolest thing in the world because that's my kind of people. It's yeah. fun to yeah. people. My level of crazy. So. Yeah, for real. And it's kind of interesting how it's been a snowball. Like we were able to get so busy from Instagram and then because we're so busy, we have more content for Instagram and it just keeps going and going. Yeah. Peace so. well. Okay, I'll okay. I'm following you right Thank now. you guys. I will let you keep typing and saying thank you and putting your Instagram names in, but I'm going to stop the recording and let Jessica get going on to whatever she has next, but we'll do a Canva training later. And then tomorrow there is lead follow-up with um joe and jade they're going to teach us how they follow up with their leads so maybe yeah. if you get some instagram leads they can teach you how to turn them into clients awesome i believe uh Haley, uh there she's doing a tc training from nine to ten as well so when you get those clients it's important to know what to look for when you're in the transaction so that'll be an awesome one too oh there we go okay nine o'clock and ten o'clock tomorrow we're busy good talk content for instagram yeah <laughs> Hey, okay, have a great day, you guys. See you later. Bye. Bye.